Hello, economic students. Okay, now that we know what will impact demand and supply, let's think about the factors that VCAR has given us to learn uh, that will impact either demand or supply and therefore the exchange rate. The first one is something we've already talked about in the last video, demand for exports and imports. Now you should remember that imports will always affect the supply curve for Australian dollars and exports will always affect the demand curve for Australian dollars. So if there's an increase in exports, you should be able to think that will increase demand. And if there's a decrease in exports, that will decrease demand and the same for supply. So you might get asked, how would an increase in the demand for or a decrease in the demand for exports impact the value of the Australian dollar? And the way you would do that is say, a decrease in export demand would decrease demand for the Australian dollar, which would depreciate the Australian dollar. Or you might get asked what would happen if there's a decrease in import demand, knowing that this is supply, this will decrease the supply of Australian dollars. And if you drew that, you would see that a decrease in supply would actually appreciate the Australian dollars, right? Or the Australian dollar and vice versa. Now you can work through these examples yourself. I don't want this video to go forever, so I'm gonna keep going. The next one is commodity prices. And this is basically because Australia relies, or we, we make so many exports of commodities that it, it's a big driver of the exchange rate. So let's use an example to illustrate this. Australia is a big exporter of coal and iron ore, and the price of these commodities is actually determined in world markets. Right? It's determined by the demand and supply for coal or iron ore. But if the price of iron ore or coal increases, which it did over 2000 and mainly coal, not so much iron ore, over 2021 and 22, from about $100 per ton to $400 per ton, and we assume that China still requires the same amount of coal or the rest of the world still requires the same amount of coal, what is likely to happen to the demand for Australian dollars? So higher prices means that more AUD is required to purchase the same amount of coal. So if we assume that they're still trying to buy that same thousand tons of coal, they've gone from needing one or $10,000 to $40,000 AUD. It's actually transacted in US dollars, but let's not worry about that. So to buy the same amount of coal, they need 40,000 Australian dollars as opposed to 10,000 Australian dollars. And they should all have dollar signs. So what does that mean? Well, it means there's an increase in demand for Australian dollars in order to buy exactly the same amount of coal which they need. And vice versa, if commodity prices were to come down like they are at the moment in 2023. Now the terms of trade incorporates commodity prices because commodities are exports and the terms of trade measures export prices over import prices. We haven't actually done this yet, so I might come back to that one or you should come back to that one, but this just incorporates the change in import prices. So what we need to be able to do is to illustrate, and I'm not gonna do this for the terms of trade, but illustrate if there's a decrease in import prices, that would mean that there would be a decrease in supply of Australian dollars because in order to buy the same amount of imports, we don't need to purchase the same amount of overseas currency or we don't need to supply the same amount of Australian currency. And if there's an increase in export prices, well, this is a demand thing. It means there's an increase in demand for Australian dollars and that would appreciate. So both of these would appreciate the dollar. And I am gonna talk quickly because whenever the terms of trade increases, that will always have the same impact, same impact on the value of the Australian dollar. Make sure you come back to that one. The next factor is foreign investment. We already talked a little bit about this in the last video, but whenever there is an investment into Australia, into Australia, we know that that would create a demand. So if there's an increase in investment by foreigners for some reason, maybe we become more attractive, there's more investment opportunities, that would also increase demand and therefore appreciate the value of the Australian dollar. On the other hand, if Australians were investing overseas for some reason, maybe you bought Netflix shares overseas, uh, that creates a supply because that's money leaving Australia. It's an increase in supply, which would also 
decrease the value of the Australian dollar, I would appreciate it. You can draw them now. You can pause and make sure you get them right. This one's a little bit tricky, relative interest rates. Remember, interest rates are the cost of borrowing and the reward for saving. So it's savings and borrowing. And we're gonna think about, this actually can get a little bit tricky if you start distinguishing between these two, but we're gonna think about one in particular. And it's not just the interest rate in Australia, but it's the interest rate in Australia relative to the rest of the world. So let me give you a quick example. If both the US and Australia have an interest rate of 1%. I wish they did as a mortgage holder, but they don't. And we would say that the US maybe Australia stayed at 1% and the US increased to 2%. Well, that's a relative decrease in Australia's interest rate and obviously a relative increase in the United States interest, interest rate. So how do we think about this impacting the value of the Australian dollar? I want you to always think that if you were a big, large financial institution, an investment bank, and you, were, you had lots of money that you had to try and invest to get the highest return. Well, you would always invest that money, all other things being equal, in the country that has the highest interest rate. So if the US interest rate was relatively higher, there would be less demand for Australian uh, dollars because less investment would come into Australia and more would go to the United States. Vice versa, if the relative interest rate in Australia went up, then there'd be more demand because more institutions around the world would put money in Australian banks and that would increase demand. So I always want you to think about it from a demand perspective and always think if you had a large amount of money, where would you kind of put that money? Which bank would you put that in? That's a simplified way of thinking about it. You'd put it in the bank in the country that has the highest relative interest rate. There's an example of uh, the relative interest rates between the USA and Australia. And you can see that the what we call the interest rate differential, the difference between the two is uh, getting larger. And this has changed even more because this was back in 2022. Uh, and what that means is there's less demand for Australian dollars. And you may also know that less demand for Australian dollars will depreciate the AUD, which is exactly what's happening in Australia right now. Credit ratings is kind of an extension of this thing. Uh, credit ratings uh, tell investors who have those large pools of money, the likelihood of a country paying back its original loan and also its likelihood of being able to pay back interest. It's kind of like if you went to borrow money from a bank, they'd wanna know how likely you were to pay it back. And the way they'd work that out is say, well, do you have a job? What kind of income are you making? In global economics, the way they do that is they look at the economy of that country who's trying to borrow money. So if you have a lower credit rating for some reason, you know, you have an economic, uh, you know, some sort of economic crisis, your credit rating is likely to decrease and that means less people will want to invest into that country. And you can think about the demand and supply in that scenario. So here's some samples uh, of credit ratings. You can see Australia has a AAA credit rating, which decreases the interest rate that we would otherwise pay. Um, again, all other things being equal. Uh, and we've never defaulted on our debt, so we maintain this AAA credit rating. Whereas a country like Brazil, they have a BB negative, and you can see that their interest rate is much higher. Speculation is the last factor. This is actually a big driver of um, the value of the AUD in the short term. Basically, there are people out there whose job it is to speculate on the movement of the AUD. If they think the AUD is gonna go up, well, if if you had information that the AED was gonna go up, you'd wanna buy it so that you could receive that increase in price and vice versa. All right, so you can draw those in your own time. Make, to, make sure you go back and have a look. Sorry it's so long, but it is a bit in this dot point. Bye for now.